remember uh, you must maximize on these youth meetings because um, I'm missing them myself. I'm not qualifying anymore. Um, you, while you still qualify, enjoy being a youth. Otherwise, there are days where you'll be busy in couples meeting and <laughs> not enjoying the youth meetings anymore. Some of you, it's your last year in the youth and because brothers are looking at you. And uh, <laughs> so maximize on these times. Let's open our Bibles for a short time before we interact. I want to talk about a very important subject. Uh, I will take in Second Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. I will read verse 8. After it is mentioned the virtues. Uh, I believe all of you know the seven virtues or eight virtues. If you want someone to mention something that is not in those in that list. If I will say seven virtues and I say one, two, three, everyone must be able to say what is not said. Um, but not what is not written. Mm. It says in verse 8, For if these things be in you and abound, they will make you that you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment as we share these eternal principles. Father, planting this seed in the lives of our young people that, Lord Father, may be fruitful and impactful in their knowledge for Christ. May you be with us and direct every moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We may be seated. Uh, I want to talk about the formula for fruitfulness because um, the Bible says, if these things be new, they will make you ne never to be barren or unfruitful in your knowledge for Christ. Meaning that you can know the message or know Christ and be unfruitful if these things are not in you. And he just doesn't want them to be unfruitful. Actually, there's a punishment for being unfruitful. Because the Bible says that man who, who did not uh, produce with the talents, he was called a wicked servant, and he was bound hand and foot and cast into outer darkness because he was unfruitful. He did not commit adultery, but he just did not become fruitful. And then he was bound into outer darkness for failing to manage what he was given. The Bible says the eggs is laid in the root of the tree. Every tree that does not bear fruit is cast outside in, in, into the fire. So, <laughs> you said we should finish the trip that we found. Anyway, we are not right. Right. Anyone who does not bear fruit was cast into the fire. So there is a penalty for being unfruitful. There is a, a punishment for being unfruitful. Your life must you must have measurable impact of the message. The fruits that are showing in your entire life. Actually, even after this life, the Bible says about um, the tree of life that it bears 12 manner of fruit. Meaning, every month there is a fruit in the tree of life. Monday, Tuesday, January, February, the tree of life bears 12 manner of fruit. So, I don't know what manner of fruit you are bearing in your life. So, every time we must have the fruits in our lives. There is a penalty. When the fig tree, Christ just came to the fig tree and find that it has no fruits. It was cursed for that. It, it was not the season for the figs. But the fig tree had no excuse. The fig tree, it was not supposed to figure out things. It was supposed to say, if the road of Aaron that was dry, he has shown an example that when you come to the Shekinah glory, it's time for fruits, even if it's not season. You, as long as, even if it was dry for years, as soon as they put it in the Shekinah glory, it budded and it blossomed, it had fruits. When you come to God, you must have fruits in your life. It is a crime to be empty. It is a crime to fail to have a fruit in your life. You remember the parable that Christ gave? I don't remember which part. I think he looked at him, maybe not looked at him. Where he says there was that tree that was not having fruit. And 
they dunked it, they put manure to say maybe it will bear fruit. And then the master, the, the keeper of the tree says, give it another year. And we put manure and we water it. Then if it doesn't bring fruit, we cut it down. Because it, why cumber it? Eat the ground, the Bible says. In other words, if you are just in the message and you have no fruits, why cumber it? You, the message. <laughs> Because you must have fruit. In Isaiah chapter uh, 5, there was a, a fruitful hill where it's a poem about the beloved who planted a vine on a fruitful hill. And he put the best seed then, and it was the choicest vine. Then when he looked for it, that it would bring fruit, it brought wild fruit. Uh, it, it's better to be unfruitful than to have wild fruits. Mm -hmm. So then he says, cry to my beloved. What more could I have done, which was not done to it? But when I looked to get fruit from it, I found wild fruit. What more could have been done in this message that we have not done to the people? What more could be given in this age that we are not given? And today, anyway, it's Africa Day. Uh, but this age, actually, I believe it's Africa Day. The message is more impactful in Africa anyway. It's not this only day being Africa Day, but this is our day as Africans. Actually, there's a quote where the prophet says uh, missionaries will come from Africa to Europe, and it's happening. We're going around the world with the message. We must have fruits in all directions of life. In other words, you must have fruits. One of the very lasting fruits of your existence mm -hmm. is the souls that you have brought to Christ. Other fruits of... Uh, uh, with the youth, you don't talk about the fruit of your womb and things. That is for couples. You don't want to hear about that. Forget about those fruits for now. You will get them in right time. Uh, but fruits, that is souls one to the kingdom. The prophet, I think it was in the message, um, uh, the lamb and the dove, he says value. What is value? If you define value, you will know what to go for in life. What is value? The, then he says, um, value is, describes it that, for example, if I have my uh, he had lost his father he says, if I would pay a million dollars to have my father coming and I talk to him a, a million dollars would be nothing compared to that moment mm -hmm. there are things that you are, uh, you are not valuing now because they are with you <laughs> but when that thing is taken from you, you value it but the thing that he says, the thing that has value is souls. When you win souls, it will be forever around your name. That is impact, and that is the fruits. The other type of fruit that we want you to have in your Christian life is the holiness and maturity. Mm -hmm. Where you are very fruitful in your knowledge of the word of God. You are very fruitful even in your own life as a believer. Meaning, there is progress each year. You are seeing a difference. If you are so fruitful as a young person, you could actually decorate the life of your parents with the fruits of what you've worked for. If you have parents that are alive, make sure while they are still there, do something for them as a young person. That is one thing that has great value in your life. So throughout the Bible, there is a penalty for not being fruitful. Actually, that's why the Bible says there shall be no barren in Israel. Meaning that financially don't be barren. Mm -hmm. We want to break barrenness academically, financially, spiritually. Mm -hmm. Oh, you should not be somebody who just uh, chop their mm -hmm. <laughs> There is nothing. You have gone to that youth camp, nothing came out. Mm -hmm. You have gone to that convention, nothing came out. You have gone to that uh, prayer meeting, nothing came out. You are the one who came out. <laughs> <laughs> you must have measurable impact. When you say in that service, I got one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, the fig tree had no excuse. I can tell you, no matter how dry you are, you have no excuse to fail to have fruits. If you have seen the rod of Aaron having fruit, if you have seen people who had no chance in life having fruit, if you have seen people who are orphans, who have no parents, but brother, at 24, 25 years, you can't be complaining about being an orphan because you're about to be a father. 
That is a dark background, but you must overcome your dark background. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, believe that there should be some gokos and kulus who say, ah, I was an orphan. <laughs> you are a goko, you are a kulu. <laughs> you are already grown up that some of your background mistakes, you must override them mm -hmm. and let God turn your sorrow to bliss. Mm -hmm. yeah, and have fruits against all odds. We are told about a, a pawn lily that is from the mud. Amen. And it rises in the center of the mud. Then it defiantly blooms against the mud. To, it rises above it. Then it blooms yes. against that background. Mm -hmm. Against your mistakes, your sufferings, your rejections, your pains, your, all the poverty that you had. Your life blooms and have fruits against what people said again about you when they said you cannot make this it gives you one more reason to overcome number nine in the bible is a number of fruits because there are uh, nine fruits of the spirit in galatians chapter five nine fruits of the spirit and then there are nine gifts of the spirit in first corinthians chapter 12 and then there is a revelation uh, let's say genesis chapter nine you find that the first verse of Genesis chapter 9 says, be fruitful and multiply. That's why when you are going to have fruit uh, in multiplication, as you, may, you pass through nine months. Because number nine is a number of fruits in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Even when John, before he could show the fruit, he was nine years and he started going to the wilderness to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. He received the Spirit even before birth, but he waited nine years for him to manifest the fruit of the spirit so then christ gives us the formula of fruitfulness he says without me you can bear nothing what can you expect from a youth who has no christ they can bear nothing if they bear they can bear disaster wild fruits so but he says when you abide in me then you shall you can bear because the life of the vine you know the vine itself cannot have fruits on it but it's commissioned to branches to bear fruits. There are things that Christ wants you to do. He wants to use your hands. He wants to use your eyes. He wants to use your feet. Because that is commissioned to the branches. The life of the vine is expressed in fruits mm -hmm. in, the, in the branches. So that's what we must see. Actually, it means fruitfulness is by connection. And it's by association. Because in... in John 15, he says, if you abide in me, then you can have the fruits. In Romans 7, he says, you were once uh, under the devil, but now you are under Christ. You are now married to Christ. So that you can bear fruit for Christ, for him that has called you out of darkness. When you are in the message, bear fruit. Your message, actually the Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. Those who know fruits out, we know them. We know that there is nothing there. We know that this is a nobody. Because by their fruits, we shall know them. <laughs> Having no fruits, we know you as nobody. <laughs> but if you have a wild fruit, we know you as a wild somebody. If you have a good fruit, we know you as a good somebody. So, God doesn't want you to be too long in this mountain where you have no fruits, where things are not moving, uh, and you are giving excuses in everything that you are doing. I like the testimony of William Hall. He saw, I think it was four rotten apples or five, I don't remember. Maybe they say four rotten apples. Then there came an apple that swallowed the rotten ones. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when a good fruit or a good experience happens in your life, it swallows the rotten experiences. Mm -hmm. When that apple swallowed, I think it was the fifth month that was swallowing the pains of all the other months. God can give you an experience that swallows your bad record. That swallows all the times when you were labeled as a mischievous girl. I know some of you, you have to really prove yourself because there are things you did as you that you have to rise above. You can't say sorry and move on only, but you must bear fruits for repentance. The Bible says bring forth fruits for repentance. So repentance is fruits. Repentance is not a statement to say, I'm, I, I'm sorry. Repentance must have fruits where you prove that you have gone beyond what was influencing you at that time. Sometimes 
you are fruitful or you are not fruitful because of your association and people that you are with. If you are with a dog with fleas, you are going to have fleas. Mm -hmm. You must filter your influences, even at school there. Don't, I, I don't believe that the ones who are non-message are the ones with more answers at school until you have to depend on them more than on your brothers. Because some of you are in the same class, but you are a friend to the other unbelievers, and you are not a friend to the sister and brother in the same class. Mm -hmm. uh, because maybe you are saying this one has no answers for school, but I have to copy with this one. I believe you are the people who are blessed. You should be ten times wiser than those outside. Your life must have fruits in all directions of life. That's why even in the Bible there is a feast of first fruits. In the feast of first, first fruits, they were saying that by showing the wheat that matured and is from the same field as those who are not yet mature, same age, same generation, this wheat has matured. They wave it before the people that it inspires others that we shall reach that level. When we see what God did through our prophet in this generation, it's a wave before us. Even what Christ did, he says, greater work shall you do. So it's to inspire you that if this other wheat under the same conditions could overcome, if this other wheat under the same moisture, same sunshine could mature, there are people under the same nasty environment, not nasty one, but I mean a nasty uh, university, uh, they manage to live pure. Uh, you know, these days people feel like uh, it's civilization to have boys and girls. Uh, you, you know, we don't move with the edge. We don't move with the edge. We move with the word of the edge. <laughs> so, you girls, it's not style. It's not civilization to be hugged around. I, I know when you're at school, you say, look, this is school. This is not church. Just one. Just two. But we were also youpas. I was a youpa myself. Uh, 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 they were youpas also. I think the university was no university bachelor association and the university sisters association. They were users. Sisters were called users. And brothers were called youpas. When we went to use it, I was told before I went to use it that you are going there to fall, brother. It's too much there. And because they told me that, it gave me one more reason to disprove them, to prove them wrong. Yes. I, I, I remember Sister Ruth, she goes, see, uh, now to uh, me and brother Dexter were, were in the same class and Ruth were in the same class. You know, even when we had to do work together, it was difficult to go to Sinton. Sinton and Kassundas. Kassundas and Sinton were residences for girls. And we were in Manfred and Baghdad also. Those were the residences for boys. We would, even when we were going for lectures, we move away from Swinton. We didn't want to be close to that area. I think I went there twice when I had an assignment problem and I really went with a heart feel that, oh, that was bad to say, let me get this assignment done. And I go to my room. But that was the standard that was there that we were not going to have anything of compromise. All my five years at university, I don't remember hugging a girl. Mm. I don't really remember that. And, uh, <laughs> when Abraham started hugging Haka, uh, it was Haka the horrible that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Things started appearing that you have to permanently deal with. Because sin will take you further than you want to go and it will cost you more than you can afford. Amen. We have to live strict under the message. I think that's why God was brewing and preparing his vessels. Yes. Because you cannot be a minister propagating what you fail to live. Mm -hmm. You must leave the standard so that you can then tell other people that it can be done. Joshua and Caleb had to carry the fruits themselves and say, look, the grapes are there. We went there and we are carrying the grapes so that you can have the grapes. Let me tell you, what you are feeling like is a hard temptation. There is someone who passed through that. Mm -hmm. And if you fall under that, in judgment, there will be another girl who was in worse situation than you, who is going to rise. That's why the Bible says the queen of shepherds will rise in judgment against this generation. Because someone 
overcame what you are complaining about. Mm -hmm. Someone in a same situation and maybe worse situation was put by God to prove that you have no excuse falling under the pressure mm -hmm. of what you are calling pressure. What you are calling peer pressure, what you are saying, a, a skirt is not a, 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 you cannot do without this, a, a, you need a trouser. Of course, some of your professions need a trouser. Uh, uh, sadly, in the medical, in our uh, rooms for change, going to theater, I used to laugh at certain sisters just to bring a bit of pain, but I saw that I was not right afterwards. Uh, because in the changing rooms when we were going for theater, there were trousers on. So when we got for theater, they were just looking at us, just to, they were inside. <laughs> But the system of this world is designed to put guilt on you. Yeah. Every, the operation, the God of this evil ages designed things. But sister, let's say, of course, in your profession, maybe you, you are a truck driver uh, as a sister. Oh, I'm not talking against professions today. I'm just putting examples. Another day we'll talk about professions that are not good for you and some that are good for you. But if you are training in your course as a going a driver, sister, as a truck driver, right? Obviously, they are going to have a, a trouser for you. But I don't expect to, all right, bowing to their pressure and wearing the trouser is one thing, but posting that trouser on Facebook is another thing. <laughs> of course, some of you, when you post and we see that you left it somewhere, we know it's a trouser down there. <laughs> we know. Some of those things with the reflectors, then you know that down there is a trouser. It's a wetsuit. That's why I want you to be so powerful until you are not cornered to live with a profession that separates the profession of your faith. We do to have good passes and good grades until your profession is okay. Yes, yes you brothers, you shall marry these sisters. Uh, discuss it together, your standards. I don't want you brothers to go for a sister who is studying medicine here, or is studying um, chemical engineering. And the parents have invested five years. Maybe she's studying architect. They've invested maybe seven years for her to be at school. When you met her at NAST, you knew that she's, she's been doing seven year course. Then when you finish, you say, now sister, sit down because um, you know how the scriptures, how the courts are, your position is in the kitchen. I know you are starting for kitchen. Uh, I think that is unfair on parents. Uh, brother, if you are like that, discuss with the sister before she says I do because she doesn't know what she's doing at that time. When you say I do without knowing what we shall do, uh, we expect you to them too because it won't do. Before you say I do, you must know. Amen. And we don't want our faith to be loved at because of uh, unwise things. Scripture is scripture. Quotes are quotes. But don't misuse quotes. Brother, if you like a Sassafra sister, go for a Sassafra sister. Don't try to, to, to find this other sister who is so cameras or whatever. Then you try to say after marriage, now remove your weave. I understand those things, you know. Amen. But like begets like. You know, marry someone who believes like you. Yes. If you Amen. believe in being scrappy, scrappy, just scrap around and you don't scrap the children. Amen. Don't try to find somebody, then you then force them to be what Amen. they were not. Mm. And of course. If that has been permitted by God, it's all right. A sisters, you will follow your husband and be who he wants you to be. The threefold quality of the minister of Paul was that he had fruits in his ministry. And also, he never deviated from the word. And also, he was followed with signs and wonders. Now, coming to our discussion today, I would like to raise any issue that you want to raise, but in any direction of life. I have a scripture, I think it's, um, is it 2 Chronicles chapter 21 or 26, I don't remember. It says uh, about um, Uziah, someone can find it. 
Uzziah, it says, as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. He sought God in the days of, of Zachariah, who had understanding of the visions of God. It says, he sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah. We had understanding of the visions of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. That is the formula. As long as you seek the Lord, God will cause you to prosper. But your prosperity is not in line with other persons' prosperity. You can prosper in just being what God caused you to be. Prosperity is not always in financial terms. You can be a billionaire on earth and fail in God's purpose for your life. But also, I believe you, when you prosper, uh, you, financially is also good to prosper. Prosper is so prospering. Mm -hmm. I've never been in a situation where having money made it worse. <laughs> but I've been in a situation where not having money made it worse. Mm -hmm. So don't blame money for anything. Money answers all things. You must have impact financially. Yes. But seek first mm -hmm. the kingdom of God and these righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible talks about the tree of life that bears fruit in her seasons. And this is your season as young people. Life is seasons. If you miss your season, it won't be easy to do what you should do now. Amen. Uh, even in the uh, dream of fire, there were seasons when there were fed cows, and there were seasons where thin cows were now swallowing mm -hmm. what you worked for all the years. Amen. The prophet says there's a time when you live in the ashes of a past reputation. Mm -hmm. While you are young today, what your hand finds to do, do it with all might. Because there's a season where you try to do something and your body cannot do it anymore. I'm glad that we have planted the churches, we have gone around, I think we have more than 30 churches planted around. And we did it in the time when our bodies could do. And I think we still have more capacity um, to do more for God. And you establish your work and do everything in this season where your body can do it. Mm -hmm. There comes a time where it's no longer your season. I was actually looking at a picture that I saw in a newspaper. I think it was Moses Tsunga. I think some of you know him. Um, these days, because of social media, someone, everyone maybe knows Messi, Ronaldo, or something. It's not bad to know. But it's bad to spend time on those things until you have no time to pray. So I know Moses Tunga because I, I used to follow football of Timbare and Boss. Um, but now I have no time for those things. <laughs> you will never find me a man and so it will ever stay. I have things that are higher, things are, that are more important. But they were showing a picture of this. He was a great football player in his seasons. But they were showing him stopping buses, meaning that he was hiking now, things were tough. Meaning that if a season opens for you and you don't maximize in that season, there will be a time where all the gains and all the opportunities that were presented to you have vanished. Yeah, and life leaves you with nothing as a memory of good seasons. Let not life leave you with nothing as a memory of these good meetings. Let not life leave you with nothing as a memory of the good Holy Ghost experiences that we have. While it's your season as young people, maximize uh, if you if what inspires you to do something do it now yes amen. don't put it to tomorrow procrastination is a stiff of time amen. if even if you have no means the anointing and inspiration becomes the means mm. some of you will be musicians right not under pressure that someone is released mm. if you release one say yes yeah, something powerful is all right don't try to write because hey someone you know, is released an album i've not released in the last two months be yourself mm and you will do better things. If some of you are going to be engineers, are going to be doctors, you are going to be nurses, you are in the parting stage of your life as young people. Mm -hmm. Make sure you maximize and do your best. Mm -hmm. 
Don't just go to UK because there is a door and people are going to UK and yeah. someone has posted that I've arrived Amen. and you say, oh, I'm still in Pulawa. Yeah. <laughs> you may arrive yeah. where you need to arrive in life without arriving in UK. Yeah. You may arrive where you need to arrive in life without... Uh, I'm not stopping you going to UK. Actually, I'm praying for you to go where you want. But after reaching UK, we will hear the same excuses that we have in Zimbabwe. Yes. Yeah. You will start saying, hey, things are tough. In the UK, because you are a person who says things are tough, mm-hmm. your mindset is what will take you where you need to go. Amen. If you go with that mindset, even and stay in America, mm-hmm. you start saying, hey, hey, it's been, it's, it's Biden who is making things <laughs> bad here. The same way you are saying, our president, you will find the new person there as, because your life is about blaming somebody. Amen. But we are teaching you that against all odds, Amen. against all opposition, Amen. you can Amen. become what you can. You are supposed to be right. surrounded Amen. by pressure, surrounded. Mm. Even in Pekamo, it says where certain it was, mm. but they kept the name of God, they mm. overcame. Amen. I believe that overcomers have no excuses in life. Mm. Your excuse is not because your father was like this, your mother was like this, that's why you are like this. It doesn't matter that one. You can rise above that. Your excuses is not because of family spirits. I know people are blaming family spirits for what they are passing through. Family spirits must be blaming you for not being able to function. <laughs> than you <laughs> blaming them. It's Kamtangas and Blangas. Someone threw something. Someone touched my garment. Someone touched it. Brother, you are above that as a child of God. Amen. This thing of blaming this and that, you will never arrive anywhere mm-hmm. without blaming something. That, with that mentality, things will follow you. You will enter a bus and then the tire will puncture because your mentality is bringing those things. You will never overcome anything. But you must be saying, here I am, what I am today, I make my mind. The Bible says you make yourself while you are young. I aim and say, this is where I shall reach. The problem of people is that they aim low and hit and they celebrate. Because you, you, you wanted to buy that shoe, now you have it. And you think everyone doesn't have that shoe, now you have it. Brother, there are things bigger than shoes. There are things, things bigger than handbags. They, they bigger than the color of your happy. Uh, you aim high to things that you say. When I achieve this, it's a generational gain. There are doors and gates that should open for you as a young person, such that even your children will benefit from what you have won. Some doors we don't open, just we uproot them. The Bible says, lift up holy gates. Yes. When you lift them up, it means your children won't struggle with things that you struggled with. Amen. Because you have made a permanent entrance yes. into levels that you struggle to enter. Amen. My children won't have to struggle. I was driving bricks when I was young. And those were the cars and I was saying, <laughs> yeah. But my children are driving and actually reversing and doing this and yeah. on their electric cars. They are children's children who must actually reach another level. Yes. The prophet says, I was driving, my grandfather, I'm driving a Ford V8. Yeah. That is what he's talking about. <laughs> and then he says, my children will fly a jet. We want generational, trans, transgenerational impact. Amen. I was feeling sad that there are some people who are dead, who are making more money than us, than me, okay. Now, do you know Michael Jackson is making more money as dead uh, uh, than some of the billionaire companies per hey, year? He's selling more albums because what he did, as bad as it was, was transgenerational. What well, let me come to the good things. John Wesley is winning more souls through his literature. Brother Branham, okay, is delivering more people through his sermons. Than some of us in the days of our life. Abraham is, is resting in the sixth dimension, waiting uh, for the day when he shall unite with us and we meet the Lord in the air. Abraham today is preaching to more souls than me is. But I should not be, I should not celebrate that. It should pinch me to say, hey, I'm a, this is my day where I must have impact. I learn from the prophet and I admire what he has done. But it must make me say, let me run and do something for the Lord. Because as you are young now, what is actually out in your mind is how you manage your time. Amen. If you can't manage time, you never manage money, you never manage anything in, time, in life. Because your mindset will drive you to lose time. When you wake up, the first thing you touch is Facebook, it's WhatsApp, because you, you want to be felt, 
you, you, you want people to know you have updated your profile and your status more than status of things in life have changed. You are changing your WhatsApp status, but financial status is not changing. You are changing your Facebook status, but financial status is not changing. As soon as you have a style, a new hairstyle, you want to post a new picture. And these brothers are downloading. <laughs> they now have an album. <laughs> Trust us when we say, Brother, who is the sister you're talking about? They say, I'll inbox you the picture. <laughs> <laughs> These brothers. <laughs> okay, they, you know what there is? We lived before this digital age. And female flesh was not as common. It, 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 these days, a father opening his phone, you will see beautiful faces. <laughs> and some fathers who are shy looking at you now, when they are alone, they will go to your profile and look at you. <laughs> <laughs> they will just look at you. Now they are saying, no, you don't look at this. this, this. <laughs> but when they are alone in the house, they will zoom that picture. <laughs> Why then? <laughs> That's why some of them faint when you announce courtships. <laughs> Say, sister, so and so is getting the product. <laughs> because the father believes in the flagship before courtship. He puts a flag on that, sister, that one, this one. I claimed it. And he's gone around you seven times and she's going to fall in love. The father. As you are fantasizing, someone is seeing the past. <laughs> someone is moving. Yes, I was always telling the brothers that have you seen that um, at City Tepan, I'm not against it, I'm, but I'm concerned. Uh, we are losers in that all the last five weddings, his brothers were coming to take. And I almost said, you brothers, please equalize. But anyway, that's, it doesn't work like that. But I wish it would work like that. Because um, our sisters are now in UK, they're in Dubai. Because our brothers outside there see the treasure that we have here. But the brothers here are carrying chairs and Coca-Cola. Everyone must take something. Everyone must take But they don't see that. Ah, uh, brother. <laughs> this needs to be married. Because sisters cannot propose to you, brothers. You, you, you must know. Because uh, the, the, the worry something is that this brother who has taken years to marry, and marries at 40 years once a, six, a 17 or 18 year old girl but it appears that they were going together and those sisters are now there or something but the brother skips your sisters to 18 years but there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> nothing wrong with that but i wish things were fair <laughs> because that new generation cannot marry your generation that you left here these boys were 18 years with this girl cannot marry the girl that you were with all oh, 30 and, and then you married at 40 she's now 30 something you can marry their group but they cannot marry your group that's why we have sisters who will be waiting in the past of sister the, about Ruth I read something I gave you last time it was in Ruth chapter 3 where Naomi told Ruth a secret says but wash thyself anoint thyself put thyself raiment so bathing is there in the scripture. I put it to Ruth chapter 3. Bathing is there in the scripture. It's very important. Uh, brothers, it's very important to, to have personal standards too. To look clean. To look, to look uh, okay. Put on deodorant. Put on something that makes life not so hard for someone near you. Brush your teeth. Um, and smile. Because, sister, if you don't smile, even when you are singing, especially you are spiritual too much, and it, it doesn't separate on the anointing. I, I'm preaching now, but I'm smiling. Eh? I mean, I'm preaching and I'm, I'm smiling. It doesn't mean that it's a powerful sermon and I don't smile throughout the sermon. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. And again, I say, Rejoice. You, sister, as soon as the service is over, you are the first one to go to your father's car and hide. And then you say, brothers, don't see you. You cry as it is. There is no way we can see you. But if you just greet one or two brothers, I'm not planting a seed of trying to greet for a while. 
I'm saying you fellowship among brethren. People must know who you are. We must know your name. We must know their name. In the combi, you sit with the Jezebels. In the in the Honda feet, when you are going back home, you feet. And you actually, you, you are squashed. You find that when you come out, oh, that's a sister inside. But in church, there is a side for brothers. There is a side for sisters. A brother can note, if, we, if this chairs here, one, two, three, four, five, are sisters, and then one is empty. And this, I shall say, there is an empty chair there. The brother won't hear nothing that is <laughs> Seated among the sisters, it will be tight. <laughs> it happened to me when I was young. I'm talking of something. I didn't hear anything in that service. But it should not be so. We are just being honest. It should not be so. In the world, these sisters are proposed to from morning to evening. Here, yeah, that's all where they know that brothers are good people. They don't propose, they, they don't go to the pastor, they don't do anything. But this sister who is saying, Lord, I'm praying for a partner. Every day there are whistles. She knows their whistle rate, actually. <laughs> but in church, there is no pastor rate. Where the whole year you find that, is the pastor quiet? Is he not? Is, maybe he has to tell me, maybe he's not telling me. You mean, pastor, no one came this from January to December? Honest sister, I, I don't know. I, no one came so far. But you are fearfully and wonderfully met. And you are a daughter of the king. You are, you are, you, you are highly favored. You are blessed. I, but I don't know. This crisis must be sorted here, brothers. We can't go youth meeting to youth meeting. Uh, uh, and then we go all the activities. You did that spoon thing with the egg. No one was married. You did the act of uh, kicking the ball and volley. No one was married. Of course, our aim of youth meetings is not for marriage. But marriage is one of the things that makes you youths. Because all other young people, yeah, some are younger than you, but they are not youths <laughs> as in particular. Because they are couples. <laughs> as soon as you marry, you won't be called a youth. I, I think we should open youth meetings for even young couples that are still youths. No category for widows and what, but we must make everyone covered. But sisters, as I told you, be presentable, have personal standards. If you do anything that is unscriptural, trying to lure brothers, you are actually chasing them away and calling the wrong ones. If you find a sister who has a, a event, I'm not teaching dressing today, you, you are excused if you, if you have something wrong. I'm not talking about you, and I didn't see you anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'm just speaking, uh, talking of a principle because if any one of you commits adultery, uh, it should not be difficult for me to blast adultery, right? Mm -hmm. If any of you steals, I should not come and say, if I want to say a thief, then I feel bad. Mm -hmm. But brother, why did you steal? Mm -hmm. You see, it should not be difficult for me to talk about things because someone is just stolen something. Mm -hmm. It should not be difficult for me to talk about dressing because someone is just dressed wrong. That's right. All of us pass through that. We appeared in church with shorts. That's right. Of course, when a brother is short, there is nothing attractive. I don't know, but just those knees. <laughs> brother, you brother. Sisters cause confusion when they just event is not allowed in the message. Yo, your V here must not go to your navel. You, you, you should have dignity and decency. Modesty is the ABCs. No one should talk about marriage when they are struggling with their dressing. Amen. That's right. Because um, with that kind, when you are now in marriage and you have nothing to lose, you, that person cannot be tempted. When you try to say, sister, please, uh, let me tell you, sisters, the way you are dressing when you come to church is the way you should dress at school. I don't know why you should be embarrassing to have a long. I'm not talking about that your, your school uniform at evening must be your ankles. No, no, no. You are just provoking criticism for nothing. <laughs> but I don't I, I, I accept it your school uniform being a gym skirt. Well, I, some of you do a long jump and high jump and you are in gym skirt. Well, I'm not talking about that today, but I don't understand why you should be in such, such pressure. Just to win a trophy. 
James kept sister is like this, and it, it suppresses. You just lose that thing and say, well, you know, this is not mine. I don't understand why under any conditions you should strip and say because we're swimming. Well, I'm not talking about that for another day, I don't know. But what I'm talking about is consistent principles. If something is a principle, it must be consistently applied. If I have to be have integrity as a Christian, it should apply throughout. There should be no moment that qualifies me as a pastor to be seen with a little girl uh, 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 teaching a principles of life alone. It doesn't work. That's why uh, in my car, uh, you have never seen a sister sitting there where Sharon sits. Even Sharon may be using another car, but it, it, it's just for picture, general picture. The Bible says, flee all appearance of evil. But it's for picture, it doesn't give you a good credibility. Some of you, even if it's your brother or sister, like some of the sisters who are single, uh, the other sister was telling me that maybe I should not always carry this baby at church because brothers think it's mine. <laughs> okay, sister. <laughs> Helping is all right, but if you are the only one with that baby every time in youth meeting, you are carrying the baby. You are carrying the baby. The fathers don't know where to start. <laughs> I'm just giving you a picture to say appearances matter. A sister with a vent that starts here and goes to the to the neck. You are separating marks on yourself. You are attracting the wrong people in your yes. life. A brother who hugs a sister is separating. That sister must know that this is the type that we don't want. Paul says this is the sort that goes into houses and leads silly women laughing with diverse lusts. Mm -hmm. A brother who is burning with lust. Lust doesn't last. Love lasts forever. But if you marry, of course the Bible says if you are burning, marry. But let me tell you, if you marry because of lust, you are going to burn again. <laughs> you are going to keep paying because that, that last doesn't get satisfied <laughs> there is a fire that removes the penny the fire of the Holy Ghost removes the penny of the things of the world these days be careful of the LGBT A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F, I alphabetical letters in one thing a brother who holds a mic like, like he Come on. Come on. Amazing grace. That is quite amazing, brother. That is quite amazing. <laughs> a brother must be strong like a brother, masculine like a brother. There are some things that I have no scripture for, so I don't talk about them. But I, I, I don't like certain beard styles. But I don't talk about them much because. Well, I have no scripture, but all I am trying to say, don't be like the world. Yeah. Hmm. You see, that's why some of us have no style of beard. They are all gone. Because if Barbara met a certain beard, yeah, all pastors would be like that. Today. <laughs> because people be catching, catching one another's spirits. He said it's in another congregation. The pastor checks his head like this and everyone is like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are some things we don't do. You won't find me much probably blasting necklaces and other things because there are quotes that say if your husband gave you that one, it's all right. Um, I've seen other people actually saying if you have artificial hair, you are going to hell. Come on, come on. That is another extreme Amen. that you are getting into. Because it's been our prophet for reasons of the bald year, he had to put something to cover that. What he taught us was don't be like the world. Amen. The best, my preference is just be natural. Glory. But I cannot use my preference as a doctrine. Yes. And anyway, if you, you as young people, must read the message respects. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Chaka, that quote that we're talking about, Brother Mojo, do we have that quote? I want you to read that quote. Uh, the, I will read for you. Uh, that, that quote about respects. 
when it comes to spiritual things, learn to respect even what you don't understand. That I will read that quotation. He says, if you don't respect your pastor, how is he going to help you? If you are going to be drinking coffee, talking about your deacons, about your pastors, you call it fellowship. <laughs> you are drinking coffee around your... You are saying that sister thinks he's spiritual. <laughs> now, let me read this quote in the message respect. It says, but here in the tabernacle, I want you all to know these things here. When God begins to pour out the Holy Spirit upon people, sometimes I know I've seen people getting in the flesh when they are under the anointing of the Spirit. Are you getting that one? He says, I've seen people getting in, get in the flesh when they are under the anointing of the Spirit. He says, I've seen them go to extremes with things. But you don't say nothing about it. Respect it. Bow your heads. You might not understand it. Neither would I. But I want you to respect it anyhow. So in spiritual things, when another sister is just raising, you say, hallelujah, you may sit there and say, that sister thinks she's, she's spiritual. <laughs> Don't say anything. You, if you can't say hallelujah, uh, well, you are different. <laughs> she's different in saying hallelujah. Don't say anything about it. When someone is ministering, maybe, and they are speaking in tongues, what, and you don't understand, don't say nothing about it. You may blaspheme the Holy Spirit. When another brother comes and is operating in the Spirit, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, don't say nothing. You, it, it doesn't mean the thing is right. It doesn't mean it's wrong or what. The prophet says, also myself, I wouldn't understand it. But he says, I've seen people getting in the flesh mm -hmm. while the Holy Spirit is upon them. It's just being untold. And the spirit, the right spirit is on you. Then you open, you allow your flesh to pop out of the spirit. Mm -hmm. But as taught people, when a pastor comes, don't discuss him. When someone is singing, don't discuss them. No matter what you fail to talk about, uh, when you are seated and you have been quiet with each other for, for five minutes, don't say those things. Talk about the weather. Talk about the war in Ukraine. Find another thing to say. But don't talk about that one. You bring things against yourself. I think when I was young, I saw a quotation. I'll look for it. I, I have not found it. I'll look for it. It, it's, it was in discernment where the prophet said, you are in this condition because when you were young, you stole the Eucharist. That Catholic thing, that one, I thought God doesn't care about that. Um, but now God judged that person for stealing the Eucharist. I thought there is nothing bad or good about stealing that. But I thought it's wrong. It's, uh, but God says he respect you as message uh, taught people. Respect your parents. Respect your pastors. Some of you Come for help with to among pastors that you don't respect. You don't respect your Sunday school teacher. You don't respect your deacon. You don't respect even another person in Zayoja. Good today has done his good things. Respect him. All these Samuels and oh, all these great men who have done that. Respect them. You you may have the greater light. You may have the greater revelation. But the greater revelation shows by how you conduct yourself and respect. Even the pastor where you came from. Don't tell us about him. You came for your reasons, but we don't want to be to, someone who markets hatred. and say, hatred here. I'm selling hatred. Uh, dollar for two. You, you don't bring your story to us so that we buy hatred. Love covers a multitude of sin. So you shall do well if those things um, um, are in you and there's a sister who is here who asked me a question on Sunday. Uh, I know she doesn't care if I will share it because it's not uh, a personal thing. She, she asked me that there is um, someone who prayed for her. And then a demon manifested. The person is not in the message. But the person saw something in her life and prayed for her and told them that in your family, 
you are experiencing one, two, three, four, five. And it happened to be true. Then she came respectfully to me and told me that person, um, I prayed for you, okay, okay, and I saw the same thing happening in her life. Then she asked me that, should we allow that person to keep praying for us? Is a denominational person, but saw something and said, in your family, you are followed by this. There's a spirit that doesn't want you to be married in your family. So my answer was, look, respectfully, if that person has seen something and has helped you, it's all right. But for you to continue under that person, if that person was powerful enough, he doesn't need to help you again after helping you. I think by one un encounter, you are helped enough, right? Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying that thing is, in, in the message, when we pray for you and we have deliverance, we are doing it under sincerity and honesty and guidance of the Holy Scriptures and the message. But the people outside there, they others use things that we don't know. Others went to Sangomas looking for powers. Mm -hmm. Others actually have no order. <clears throat> you go there and you say, this man has seen something and is helpful. All of a sudden, you feel a hand around you. <laughs> we don't touch those areas here. But there, they, they touch from head to toes, trying to cast things away from you. And you may be abused, actually. <laughs> by people with no integrity who seem to see things but anyway all our answers must come from the message we have gifts in the message we have deliverance in the message we have the anointing in the message we have people who can dream about your life in the message and we have you also to find inspiration directly from God is there any question now as we round up and we finish as we finish um if there is any question, you just raise your hand and we assume you are asking for somebody. <laughs> if there is any question about any direction of life, whether it's your experience with God, whether it's about your job, your courtship, or it's about order, or it's about um, which of the new fashions are okay, which we can bring them in now, or uh, which one, what do we want to update in the message? <laughs> The message is perfect and complete. There is nothing that you can bring from outside that can work. When I repented, my science teacher told me that we give you three months to be back. Because I was my pansula, I was at my old stars, I had my golden tooth, I had two tops, that head that was covering my, my eyes. He told me that in front of the classes, this one, we give him three months. But I thank him because he gave me another reason to, <laughs> to stand for the message. At that time, I was very shy. I couldn't even stand. I remember one time I, we went for, for it, it was attachment, field attachment when I was doing medicine and surgery. Then when our group was supposed to present, I fell sick. We are going to stand before the class presenting. It was going to be difficult. I even tried to pay my classmates to say, can you tell the teacher that I'm sick? But anyway, it's a sickness because it's a disorder. It's a personality disorder. <laughs> now I'm standing declaring the works of God. Now I'm standing showing the grace of God in my life. So, complexes, shyness, and all those things, you can overcome them. Mm -hmm. One time, someone was telling me that they can't go for youth camps because they are afraid they will wet the blankets. I know some of you reach form four like that, but <laughs> if it's a problem, put on pampas in. And <laughs> wake up early, wake up early. Don't miss the youth meetings because of such embarrassments. It's because of your nervous system development. It's, it's a, it, it's a, it, it happens when you, are, you, you have insecurity. Your nerves grow slower. We are laughing, but someone here is being helped. Someone here is being really, really, really helped. I also did an animation on that to say, 
how we can do. Some people actually buy a, a, a moisture sensor and they put it. Every time there is moisture, it goes, <laughs> it teaches you to wake up around those times. <laughs> These are real life things, right? <laughs> and we don't want to, to miss meetings. And imagine you wake up and you find yo, <laughs> and then there is no way of cutting that blanket around. <laughs> but we want to to have solutions. But I believe prayer also. And sleeping early, when you sleep, you are too tired. You've been on Facebook too long. When you sleep, you sleep flat. I think those who wake up to pray, it serves them from some of those things. Anyway, some of you rose who were, I'm waiting for your hands to rise up, and eh? that's why I'm speaking, I'm, I'm preaching so that you I ask questions. Some of you grew under rejection. <coughs> you tend to be too quiet and you feel like no one loves you. It's a personality disorder. It's a complex. A complex you must overcome Sometimes it's inferiority complex, and inferiority complex is not humility. Mm -hmm. You must overcome it, then become humble. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are always like this, but this <laughs> they, they, they were traumatized, they have scars, and they can't trust themselves because probably in your family or the one who was right than others, the mother was always saying, This one is the culprit. Mm -hmm. So you grew up like that, and you are always afraid. and you are not confident to raise your hand and ask a question because of those complexes. <laughs> but complexes must be overcome. Be confident. You know that there is no one like you. You are unique. You must not... Yes, yes. Wait. What is the youth committee be planning something for this year? This year we're not going to have a youth convention. We're trying to push push it to April. So that we have a good one. But I heard people from all around saying they want it in December. Well, we may bow to pressure, but so far we are planning to push it to April so that we can have something more more organized. I listened to the message around the brother Branham, a certain city. The brother Branham was talking about shorts being undercoming a woman. And then he said, and everyone who is uh, anything that pertains to a woman is in abominable in court. So, me, when I listened, I was uh, two shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Those shorts, I was wearing them inside my. I wasn't wearing them like a now. They might take a look at my child. So when I listened to that message, I bet them. <laughs> so don't know that you know who it is. Is there might be an extremist or or okay, okay, okay. Or I quoted the the quote wrong or something like this. There is there anything wrong about wearing shoes inside the trousers? Okay. Well, everyone must act as the Holy Spirit needs. So if, the Holy, if something condemns you, you don't need my confirmation to say, no, you should not condemn you. If something condemns you, you would rather be an extremist within you without having anybody than for you to have a, a question around you that we may both be judged for if I tell you it's all right. But uh, in my uh, opinion, I would think maybe uh, wearing a shirt uh, and it is seen, um, and you come out with your legs and your, your squangas and gastronomias and things out like that, it scams. But I'm not, if you have five shorts and one trouser, I, 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 as long as we don't see those shorts, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but these brothers who go and try to fix a mic, then you see one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> that one doesn't work. That one doesn't work. Anyway, when you are kneeling down, know that things are moving. <laughs> and try to remain decent. Because 
Many times when you go to church there and to the altar and you try to alter something there, everyone tells them <laughs> to the wall to pray to the Lord because they are saying, then they come back and say, oh, it's still peace. <laughs> try to be decent. Let everything be done decently and in order. Um, I know after a short, someone will come to three quarters. <laughs> Let's just finish the journey, brothers. Eh? Three quarters. What's, you know, we come here with three quarters. Would you like to see all those legs and all those things? And some of you have scars and marks and, and varicose veins. <laughs> and varicose veins. <laughs> you say, brother, how about those varicose veins? <laughs> it's a condition. <laughs> Um, I know some of you because of the poisonous websites that are all over in the message will say, ah, but we saw on internet a picture of Brabham with a shot. Well, one thing that you must be careful of is that those pictures, of course, can change something that I think they were in Africa somewhere and the prophet saw those things. And he says those safari things, uh, let me take a picture with them. And it was not for public. For example, some of your pictures with your family, let's say you are in your bedroom and you are playing with your children, wearing pajamas, those pictures are not for public. But the level that the prophet's life reached, everyone wanted everything about him to come out. When he's he he at home, mowing alone, those are family things. But when family things come out in the public, that's when people start questioning. But it has nothing to do. And I was uh, noticing that some of you are not as powerfully reading. And because you've been poisoned by those websites, don't go to those websites. Keep yourself pure. Some of the things you have no answers for, but some of the things we have studied ourselves about the crowd, they, they, up to now they have no explanation. They try to talk about the rocket detonation, but that theory did not work also by the speed of the crowd also. One time I was giving this example. People say there are inconsistencies in the accounts of the prophet. Why did they not, they not bring it when he was alive? He even invited people to say, come and stand here. The angel of the Lord is here now. Come and stand with your issue. They did not. When he died, that's when they came with their things. At one time, I had something that made me understand some of those things. I was going to South Africa. So that day, I did not go to the surgery. I, I then went for my COVID test for the COVID certificate. When I was at 4th Avenue, they're doing my COVID certificate. A patient phoned me because I normally work at my 12th Avenue surgery. A patient phoned me and said, um, are you at work today? I said, no, I'm going to the airport. But they said, I have a, an emergency. I said, okay, I'm near my surgery. That is a third avenue. So let's meet there. So when I finished, I went to third avenue there and treated the patient. When I arrived, I found that there were other patients that were waiting. I treated them. Then I went to South Africa. But some of these sisters who work with me, like Sister Peshi and some of these when they heard me in South Africa saying, oh, I'm tired, I was with the surgery. They said, the pastor is lying. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't come to work today. He was not there. <laughs> if that thing was raised when I'm dead, they, uh, people would believe that I lied. But when I heard that someone was saying, ah, but pastor, you were not there. Someone came to me and said, but pastor, you were not at the surgery. I said, oh, now I have to make it clear. I was not at the normal surgery that I work in. But I, I, I have three surgeries in town and the, and the maternity making four and the other one that we're building in Kaut and the other one that we're building in Pumla South. So when I am not in my normal, it doesn't mean I was not at the surgery. So those are some of the things. Don't even entertain those things. We have a lot. The message is so true that we have used it and it has worked. And the men of those people who reject the message will reject the Bible. Amen. 
Because the message in the Bible is one thing. And now it makes me want you people to be very sure when you are marrying that this person, are they not going to later say the prophet was wrong? After marriage, imagine your, your parents took 21 years raising you in the message, praying, and you are playing the tapes and you are listening to sermons. Then someone says, after marriage, you have been with them. Then they say, oh, honey, I've discovered something. <laughs> <laughs> then all the labor of your parents and the pastors, for the, then that person says, no. Look, the prophet was wrong. The prophet was lying there. And, and the very plastic, the very fools walk with walk their shoes where angels fear to trot. And when those people leave the message, you find them now doing funny things. It's okay to just leave the message alone with your own decision. Than to first put a trailer in your car, put another trailer and another trolley, and then you go to the bush pumping all trolleys behind you. If you are just a wonder fit and you are navigating your trees there, but if you have trolleys following you, you are just being cruel to those who are following you. Mm -hmm. Sisters, be sure. This brother, when he's about to marry you, at least he must know church edges. He must know seals. Brother, if you have not finished church edges and seals, it's not a doctrine, right? But I think you must, as a believer of the message, you must know the message Hallelujah. before trying to marry. Right? Let's have a question. Our time is up. I want to round. Yes. So, um, on the question of... Uh, that brothers are not seeing sisters, we are seeing them. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, I think what attracts men to, like what attracts a brother to a sister is purity. And sisters also look for security, which is provision and protection from my brother. So if you do not have those things, I'll lose me. Now a sister, if you're not proof, if you're not pure, it's very difficult. And these days, Gulama Ama butterflies. As I'll check inside the good side of them and stuff like that. But we do not want a, a case where we'll be embarrassed later on. So some of us we are afraid of that. We don't want to make a mistake of doing that. Okay. All right. Uh, those who are afraid and they don't want to make a mistake. Um, I would like to see the person they will choose <laughs> because um, as much as I'm against impurity and all that I'm a big believer in the grace of God in our lives that someone may have messed up in their lives like Rosella, this testimony of Rosella right? she messed up but God's grace over, uh, to override that we read about Rab the Hallowed and God's grace. In teaching, we teach you to be pure, our sisters. But whosoever is without being out of ignorance, the days of ignorance, God winged it. And now commands everyone to repent. If in the days of your ignorance you messed up, I believe the grace of God can rescue you. He brought two issues there that are very vital. Say, sisters, be pure. That is very good. Then he says, sisters, look at the brothers and they want security to for you to provide uh, but also as that is correct but i don't believe that sister must sisters must aim to be gainfully married gainfully married where their future in life is around uh, the riches of the man you must work hard as a sister work hard as a brother and have a future together and then um, in terms of purity there is not uh, the prophet talks about the sacred virtues that a sister has. Uh, that because you are representing the bride of Christ, there are sacred virtues. You cannot be loose, you cannot be hacked around. Just be pure. Just don't allow brothers, even when you are engaged, to play around with you. This is a very treacherous hour and age. But brothers, go to university, study. And if, you are, if, if school is not your portion, because we are given different. Some people will be businessmen. Some people will, will be working hard. To, because the Bible says, if you don't provide 
for your family are worse than an infidel. Meaning that all these matotis that are making money there, they are better than you if you are not making money for your children. Because it says if you don't provide for your family, you are worse than an infidel. So these brothers of tomorrow, these husbands of tomorrow, must have sources of income. Being a prayer warrior is this portion. But you are not going to pray every day for sugar and salt. You must be able to leave an inheritance for your children. Whether you start from humble beginning, me I was selling prisons. And now I have my centuries and farms, I have many other things, I don't want to talk about those things. But I'm saying that I started from worse beginnings than some of you. I was selling prisons, I was selling chickens, I was selling water gases. When Kulman was being built, I went, went there in the new houses selling water glasses, selling perfumes. But these brothers, at one time, uh, our brother from Arare there, a good friend of mine, phoned me and says, we are opening a company in Bulawayo. Can you ask brothers to distribute flyers for us? And I thought, well, that is an honor. Brothers are opening for our friends, our youths to make money. When I told our youth brothers to say, if there's a brother wants people to distribute flowers, they say, ah, sisters will see us distributing flowers. flowers. <laughs> now, those brothers are not working even today. <laughs> they thought sisters will see me giving people flyers. Sisters will see you making man. Yes. Start, whether from a juice cart, start from something, and rise from there. You, you, you cannot just jump to a high branch. The small steps mean something. We found progressing. Uh, the, I was hearing that the person who has one of our favorite shops here in Bulawayo advancing Kitsmat. No Kitsmat. Now they have another branch and they said it's they are advancing, they are driving nice cars. I heard that man used to sell Ama CD, Ama DVD at Bulawayo Center. He was selling those, burning and selling the DVDs, but he wanted to reach somewhere and he reached there. So in that vein, brother, what I would say is that there are countless sisters in the message who are regretting seeing the men they kicked because the men had no man. And now watching in a space somewhere, the men prospering with his family and his wife. Some of the sisters who are materialistic and the brothers were beauty -ristic. They tend to suffer the consequences. Sister, you rejected this person. All right, me, myself, when I wanted to marry, I saw these girls at the Pastor Marissa's house. My resolve to be a bachelor was lost instantly. And I thought in my own heart because I had no car. And Pastor Marissa was stressing me. He had two cars in the park there coming for service. And those girls had never walked in the dust for a long time. And I was thinking that, how do I start my story? And just calling a girl from high there and say, come, it's nice here. Come <laughs> down. We are rejoicing down here. I thought, yes. But I was determined. Uh, I had my degree, but nothing was coming out. You know these days, you have an engineer's degree, and you are teaching, and you are doing something. But your time will come, your season will come, and you go to make all things good. So I told Pastor Marissa my story, and my my wife has a still has our engagement ring. Why she still has that one? Because my whole salary that I was earning that time managed to buy that ring. Imagine that ring was four hundred USD, and it was my whole salary. And this is the job time where you know today. It meant a lot when I put that ring, I put everything I had and remained empty to just say, go with this promise that I will marry. By the time we married, um, our wedding was expensive, but it was three months. My courtship started in June, June 5, 5, 5 July. It was announced with a, a short work. Because it was difficult. I was a preacher, right? It was difficult for her to keep hiding in my car. Hiding when we were together. You know, we didn't want people to start guessing that 
What are they doing? We don't know it. So we have to announce our courtship early for matters of uh, purity and integrity. But when we announced it, it was courtship and engagement. In those days, you know, we are so pure as brothers. I never thought that I can have troubles. If she has the Holy Ghost and I have the Holy Ghost, I thought, fine. But these days you know that you can all have the Holy Spirit and still not be compatible. This one is a child of God, you are a child of God, but you are not meant for each other. <laughs> it's possible. And when it fails, don't blame me, don't blame him. It's all that you are not compatible. So when we went for our marriage, it was in December. That is July to December. 5 December we were married. Now we are turning 14 years in marriage and enjoying it. Imagine some of the people after one month in marriage, they feel it's an anniversary on its own. <laughs> they have covered, they have moved. <laughs> so you people, be sure of the person you are marrying. But having said, so let me balance it this way. When I say it, sisters, you regret for the brothers that you, you gave zebra kicks because they had no man. And your parents also are saying, ah, sister, you have gone to university and then we give you to this nobody. And this man has nothing. Look at his shoe. <laughs> like that bus that is. <laughs> it's Wafana Wafana. That bus is for some. You have this so. Well, if you judge a child of God by one chapter, you're going to regret later. But let me also balance it by saying, I'm not influencing you to say yes to a man that is struggling because I said you will suffer. No. Sometimes you say yes and still suffer with that same man doing nothing. <laughs> Sometimes it will still fail. You will say, then you will say, Pastor, in that meeting, you said we should not do, we should not say no to this suffering brother. You don't marry to help him out. You don't say, yeah, this brother, if I say no, you will cry. Ah. But, sister, you are going to cry yourself for saying yes. Anyway, balance all things. Another question then we pose. What time is it? I'm trying to make it easy and relaxed. Hmm? Alright, we're about to close. Um, I would have asked a question here, but uh, don't raise your hands. But I will ask the question. Raise your hands, I will see them. <laughs> How many of you have received the Holy Spirit? Don't raise your hands. But don't be, don't be worried also. Because it's disturbing my count. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The first thing that you must have is the Holy Spirit. Because it shall lead you. Marriage is a three courts, <laughs> according to Ecclesiastes. It says a three court capable no one can easily break. It's you and your wife and God every day. If you marry someone without God, their human nature is going to bother you. Every one of us has an, an annoying behavior that is okay when they are alone. But if you bring somebody, when you have temper and you, when you are alone with your temper, it's alright because you beat trees and, and kick stones. But if you bring someone to your life with that temper, you won't be kicking trees anymore and stones. You'll be kicking someone's daughter. That's right. So work on your failures and weaknesses and overcome it. And then you get somebody to be with you. Right. At one time I tried to say, let's have projects with the youth. And we, the trustees rolled out some funds for projects. But we're disappointed that our brothers, it's not that they lack capital. Because at that time we proved that it's not a problem of capital. We availed certain funds. But brothers had no ideas. Like if I say, now brothers, let's do projects. And I say, don't talk about broilers. Don't talk about firewood. Brothers will dismiss without saying one word. You must have ideas and creativity. Something red. So that when your season opens, you don't start looking for things. It's already in you. Be ready to work hard and do something that will take you to another level. 
We have more sisters in university than brothers who are in university sometimes. It's not that people are marking brothers down in the exams. No. But I always say that, sister, if you are going to varsity, don't be like varsity. Still obey your husband. Still be good. Right, any questions? So that we go any questions? Those brothers who spend the whole day watching soccer reels, <laughs> watching who is the goat, who is... <laughs> you know much about Messi, Ronaldo, and Haaland. And I know those people myself because I live in a world where those things is there in the Facebook reels and what. But I myself play soccer. I can play. I, I can. Do, do you have a ball? Do you have yes, a ball? Yes, Just yes. throw it in front now. It's very <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we grew up playing soccer, and the skills remain in our legs. It's like some. Oh, it's the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play this thing, but anyway, when you can bring it, okay. Um, if you spend the whole day finding who is a. Uh, is lifting the trophy of this who is doing what you are losing time let's say, let's do calculations you have 24 hours, right rich people and poor people, each one have 24 hours a day that's what, in terms, billionaires and bill owners only have what 24 hours a day but the difference is what they do when you wake up 